Alright, welcome everybody. I'm gonna give, as I always do, a few minutes for people to join in, say hello, we'll do a quick check on audio, video, all that stuff, and then we'll get right into our demo for the day. Gonna be doing some character bust sculpting, and uh, we'll kind of see what comes of it. I don't really have anything in mind in particular. I'll probably be pulling up a couple different references and kind of leaning in a few different directions, so maybe we can get some suggestions from the audience as we go, uh, but we'll do that here in just a moment. All right. Welcome, Cinematics. How you doing? Give just a couple minutes here for people to join. My Cintiq is so dusty. I am so glad you guys cannot see it. I need to wipe this thing off. I swear. It is so hard to keep these things clean. I wipe it off like once a week, and as soon as I'm done wiping it off, like a new fresh layer of dust it just comes in within the hour. It's it's pretty annoying, but you know, luckily I'm moving my hand around on it a lot, so I tend to wipe most of the dust off. <laughs> Bread boy, welcome, heyo, is right. Welcome, welcome. Let me make sure I got everything set up here. Make sure our pressure sensitivity is working. All right, we're all set. Johnny Cole, welcome, welcome. And everybody else that's joining us, I've just brewed myself a nice afternoon espresso in my fancy mug here. Very fruity coffee. I'm normally not a huge fan of fruity coffee, but that one's actually pretty good. Sumi Kiwi, welcome, welcome. All right. I say we just go ahead and get started. We don't need to wait, you know, a ton here. But um, I'm going to be sculpting a character bust throughout this whole process. Feel free to ask questions or just hang out and uh, listen to me ramble, because I'll be rambling a lot probably. Let's go ahead and get in and uh, get started. Let me make sure I have chat in a place where I can see you guys. Welcome, HUD boy. Glad to have you. Lurking while working on some stuff in the background. I'm watching on TV, so I won't be able to chat. But I am, in fact, lurking. I'm sure many people are lurking. I tend to uh, uh, lurk when I'm watching anything live as well. I don't, I don't watch a ton of stuff live, but... When I do, I'm I'm also a lurker because I feel like I don't really have much to add to the conversation a lot of the time. Uh, it's just uh, enjoyable to have someone to hang out with and watch. Do we have Sim on? We do. Okay. I'll try to keep an eye on chat here, but uh, if I miss your message, just uh, throw it back in chat again, and I'll do what I can. Answer as much as possible. All right. So... We're just going to play around and, like I said, see what we can come up with. Listen to some chill music. I've been struggling with the, the music on YouTube lately because it keeps getting all my videos uh, demonetized. Even though I find something that'll say like, uh, DMCA free or whatever, so like it's like f good for you to and it never is <laughs> It never is. I don't know. I don't know why but uh, I have found in my experience that Nintendo music actually uh, Is great for YouTube and I love Nintendo and Nintendo music hence why we're listening to some right now Some chill Nintendo music a lot of stuff from uh, Animal Crossing. Um, what else? What else? Um, Stardew Valley. And a couple others. So hopefully you enjoy the, the chill vibes as we get in here and sculpt. Thoughts on Across the Spider-Verse? It was so fun. It was just super enjoyable to watch. A visual masterpiece if you will. I really had fun watching it. I didn't know it was a two-parter until I was like toward the end and I looked at my watch and I was like, 
Hey, how are they gonna end this mo- Oh, they're not. <laughs> Two parts. So I found that surprising. But other than that, the movie was amazing. I would love to actually watch it again. Let's see, let's go. We're gonna go more cartoony today. As you guys know, I love to. <laughs> Make a video where I'm trying Blender. I, I, what is this idea that I don't know how to use Blender? I, I use Blender. I just don't use it for sculpting specifically. Uh, that, that might be a funny video though. You know, sculpting in Blender. I'd have to, uh, brush up on it a little more. Brush? Huh? Huh? Anybody? No? That's fine. Let's grab an IMM primitive sphere. I am not, I'm not the entertainment funny sculptor guy. I just, I'm just here to sculpt, all right? And have a good time. I'm not gonna make funny, funny blender videos. I don't even know what that would look like. Getting a little monkey here. How long will I be streaming today? At least a couple hours. I don't know. Play it by ear. I do have to... Probably like three hours max, I would say. Got a thing to go to tonight. Oh, don't want to get too sunken in here. Why not use Gizmo? So I've been using ZBrush longer than you. And this was here first. <laughs> uh, the transpose line is, uh, it's got some features that the 3D Gizmo cannot do. Um, I'm not gonna show them all. There's a lot of them. Watch, uh, I have a video on my YouTube channel uh, called, God, I cannot, it's been a while since I've made it. Because I used to get asked that question a lot. Uh, it's it's about the transpose line though, and uh, all the hidden features that are available in it. Like I said, there are quite a few. Uh, like you can have a bend curve deformer in your transpose line. Um, back before deformers ever existed, because the the 3D gizmo did not exist. But yeah, this is a lot more organic and fast uh, if you're used to it, and uh, it's much better than the gizmo in my opinion objectively, just because you can quickly orient specific direction very quickly and easily and like constrain to those. There's a lot of different stuff that you can do with it, as well as snap to planes, get perfect pivots. If you work in the toy industry, that's very important. Transpose line, baby. Transpose line. All right, I do need to uh, separate the ears. I don't want to merge the ears yet, but I do want to merge the head. Just like that. And the neck. Cylindrical. We need to narrow in on it. Don't want everything to be like parallel, right? You always want to get rid of that stuff as quick as possible. All right. I'm going to lower the res on this head. I feel like I'm eating this microphone. So by default, you have the transpose line. Whenever you press W on your keyboard, W, E, or R, this is the toggle for it up here in your UI. Unless, it, unless they started making the default the 3D gizmo, which they might have. It's just the quick toggle up there. Would you ever go Gizmo? Yeah, I use the Gizmo a lot. I use the Gizmo for uh, deformers. So, grab my Gizmo, hit the gear, grab me a deformer. 
Would you ever go Gizmo? Let's see. I want to go more feminine. Right now, these shapes, they're feeling pretty androgynous. Alright, what are we thinking for... Hmm. Let's add some subdivs here. Probably this edge is a little too strong. We'll knock some of this back. We're going to be experimenting today. Let's grab a nose. Grab my insert nose brush. Look, a perfect nose. Incredible. What do you mean it doesn't look like a nose? Yes, it does. Look. You just gotta change it slightly. Boom. Nose. Okay, let's make the head less tall. Squash the proportions. Make it feel more cutesy. More round. There we go. Oh, getting a little Neanderthal back here. Cro Magnum. Let's pull in. Uh, and I'm just gonna add here. We'll just do this. I'm just gonna throw a sphere, quick sphere down for the body. I'm not gonna. That was weird. Uh, I'm not going to probably do a body. If I do a body, it'll be, like, really s simple. just want to do, like, a simplistic chest shape. Just something that's a nice placeholder. If you guys are wanting to practice faces, get better at sculpting faces, this is how you do it. Just do simple busts. Don't do full characters. You're going to waste your time making a lot of stuff that's not going to improve your faces very much. Just make a lot of heads. Excuse me. Haven't done ZBrush in a while. Found it overwhelming. About flow. Flow of form, maybe? Is that what you're talking about? Or flow of, like, using the UI? What flow do you refer to? Alright, that'll do for now. We're just winging it today. Nothing in particular. Just kind of playing around. Experimenting, seeing what we can find while keeping one eye on on chat. Let's try to split my brain between sculpting and talking, which is, uh, I'm just going to say it, it's impossible. <laughs> I sculpt so slow when I am uh, trying to stream or record or anything. But that's okay. I slow. I still find it really fun. Gives me somebody to hang out with. And probably somebody for you to hang out with. Loops. Ah, the loops. You're talking about edge flow. Edge flow is important for sculpting, but not as important as animation. So like right now, I'm fighting my geometry. But if I had a loop or you know the geometry naturally going this way, it would make that work a lot easier. And I can remesh this in about 30 seconds and make it flow a lot better for the form that I'm trying to create. And then it won't be as pinched and it'll be fine. 3D sculpting is very complex. Don't, uh, don't get fooled by people who make it look easy. Cough, cough. It's, uh, it's a slow, laborious process. And maybe I can show that to you today <laughs> by how slow I will sculpt.
Like I said, we're experimenting, so I probably will go even slower than normal. Not that I'm, like, that slow, but hey. We'll figure it out. Uh, in your How to Stay Motivated video this past week, if you haven't checked it out, definitely go give it a quick watch. Uh, you say that it's important to do something you like. I'm trying to enter the video game industry, and I hate texturing, but most work offers ask me to have texturing skills. Well, maybe you're applying for the wrong job. <laughs> and uh, just because it's asking you to have those skills doesn't mean that that's going to be your 9 to 5. You know, find out more about the job, maybe. If you're, uh, I don't know exactly what you're applying to, but, you know, if you're, sounds like you're probably applying to some kind of at least 3D generalist position. And in that case, yeah, you might need some texturing skills, but it might not be your, your everything that you do. Might not be the whole thing, the whole whole job. Could just be a very small part of it. Like, hey, we just want to make sure that you know how to do this. So that if we do need you for it, we got you on call. Nose bridge time. The best kind of bridge. The nose bridge. Hanabashi. Throw in some quick eyeballs. What kind of job after finishing the Appeal Academy? Like, what kind of jobs could you acquire? Well, that really depends on you. What you want to do and how much work you put in. Like, just because you sign up and go to college and pay tons of money for college doesn't mean that you're going to leave college and be able to get X job. They might make you that promise, and I think that's a cruel thing to do. It's kind of a scammy crummy thing to do, and it's why I don't really uh, recommend a lot of higher education in terms of college for art, because they will make you promises that I will not. I'm not going to say you're going to get X job just because you go through my course, or you're going to have this skill. If you put in the time and you put in the work, yeah, you absolutely will. Like, you will be loads better than if you don't go through my course. But I'm not going to, like, sit here and make a promise like, oh yeah, yeah, for sure, you're going to be able to do this. But the Appeal Academy specifically focuses on sculpting from an aesthetic standpoint. So if you're interested in, like, learning how to rig and animate, don't sign up for the Appeal Academy. Don't sign up for my stuff. I'm a sculptor. I'm going to teach you how to sculpt amazing characters. And if that's what you want to learn, then you should sign up for my program. You should sign up for my course. All right, general position of the mouth. You know, I've been doing a lot of closed mouths lately, so we're gonna do an open mouth today. I, uh, been doing too many closed mouths. And I, I used to get a, I, I'm sure there's probably a lot of people here that are interested in how I would go about that process, just because it can be pretty frustrating and confusing. I have, and if you've watched a, some of my older videos, my process is quite a bit different than uh, what I used to do. Much, much faster process. I'm trying to just car whoops, carve in here a little. Let's remove some volume. Oh. 
Juan, welcome. Hello, hello. Glad to have you here. So I have worked on stuff for animation and stuff for games. And uh, I just, I'm really upfront with them. As you know, an artist, I'm just like, hey, if you, if you, so I am lucky enough to be at a point where people come and ask me to work on their projects, which is a very fortunate place to be. I will also say that I haven't done that kind of work in a number of years, probably like two or three years just because I am completely dedicated to creating my educational content, the Appeal Academy and all my other stuff that I do for uh, my content on my gum road, which there's a link down below for, as well as creating free content here on my YouTube channel. Uh, but I would be very honest and upfront with those people and say, hey, thank you like for, for reaching out. You know, I see like this project, you want X number of characters. I would be happy to sculpt those characters for you and make them look amazing. But I'm not going to be doing all the low res. I'm not going to be doing anything with rigging. I'm not going to be doing anything with animation. Like, I will sculpt the characters. I will make them look amazing. But the rest is up to you or whoever else you have on your team. And every single time, just by being upfront with that information, I've never had an issue. Do I have a community? Do you have a community Discord? There's a, a Discord. It's for the Appeal Academy specifically, though. I don't have a public Discord. Now, I, honestly, I I like Discord quite a lot. I think it's an awesome tool, but it's also a lot to manage. I used to manage the ZBrush Discord uh, by myself. And I just got, I, I also manage the ZBrush subreddit. So if you're looking for a community, I'm the admin for the ZBrush subreddit. But I used to manage the ZBrush Discord by myself. And I just couldn't keep up with it. There was just way too much going on in my life. And there's, <laughs> there still is. So I was just like, hey, I'm handing it over to somebody else. So now the Pixelogic team owned now by the Maxon boys. Now they run the Discord. The actual Pixo employees. So I gave it over to them. It was just too much. And I, I would like to, you know, I like having communities and I, I do a lot here on my YouTube channel as well as running the ZBrush uh, subreddit. But even that, even that, you know, I think adding another community to that would just be a lot. Not that I don't like hanging out with you guys. Hey, I'm here right now. <laughs> what about the Z Modeler? I love Z Modeler. I use Z Modeler all the time. You guys know I love the Z Modeler brush. I have quite a few tutorials on the Z Modeler. I have a really great one on making a, uh, a robot. Where's my... On my gum road. I don't know why it's not loading. There we go. Here you go. Design and create a robot. This one's really fun. You can learn how to make this guy here. Over on my gum road. He's a fun, fun little character. It's been a while since I've mentioned that one, so I figured I'd mention it again. Normally I just uh anymore. I uh insert one of my pre made ears. Because ears are a little tedious, but hey, today we're going we're going all the way from scratch. And I mean it. Like I said, we'll go a little slower, but hey, we don't have anywhere to be, at least right now. This music is so calming. Likely to fall asleep here on stream. Hey Greg, welcome to the stream. I'm doing fantastic. Glad to have you. Yes, you are too much. 
Too much Selena. How dare you? How dare you ask me to run a Discord channel? Ugh. No, I already have a Discord channel. I just don't want to run two Discord channels. <laughs> and uh, the the other one, I, I I actually have been giving some thought to opening up my Discord just for anybody to join, and then having a private uh, channel in the Discord for my students, which isn't a bad idea. But uh, I'm a little hesitant to open the front floodgates to people like Selena, who are too much. Well, as you, Greg. Yeah, I know, Greg. I know you. I know what you're up to. Yeah. Polygon's gonna call people out by name. He's not scared. You know what? I said I was gonna do an open mouth, didn't I? Here, we'll do this. It's gonna push in. Oh, but your lips, your beautiful lips! It took like five seconds. It's fine. Look. It'll take five seconds to do this. We're just gonna push it in. Push it. Just using the move brush. A little bit of smooth, shift key. Wow, he looks... It looks... Terrified. Mechanical objects are definitely... I... I honestly, you know, between the two, I actually think organic's more difficult. Just because with mechanical stuff, you can be precise, you know, you can just do measurements. With organic stuff, sure, you can do that, but it's got a... It's got a finesse to it that hard surface doesn't necessarily have the same exact feeling of, you know? Alright, let's get the little filtrum in there. And then what we're gonna do is just a quick mask. So I still haven't, you know, remeshed. We're still on that stretched geo from me pushing in on the mouth. So I'm just gonna adjust. I, I like to go as long as possible without remeshing, if I can. Let's just play with that a little. And you'll notice I'm not going to sit here and work on the lips for a really long time, because I want to get the basic stuff done first. Let's click on Append, and something that will help a lot here going to be a simple set of teeth. So we just take a cylinder, plop it in the mouth, turn on transparency, make sure it's not too wide, and then we'll just kind of butt it up against the top like that, give it a slight angle, maybe squash it a little more, because I did a bad job, there we go. Something like that. Turn off transparency. All right, and we got some teeth. Yeah, we did it. Great job. I'll do a mouth and, or not a mouth, a tongue. Some other stuff here in a bit, but let's make some slight adjustments here. And we'll work on the eyes here in a moment. I need to square off the brow. It's looking too worried. It's really easy to uh, bake in an expression if you're not too careful. And I try to avoid that as much as possible, but I'm going to go for more of a happy expression. And that was looking far too surprised. All right. Let's turn on perspective for a little. I'm going to look at this three-quarter over here, this side view. And start playing with this cheekbone area. Okay. So we're going to flow down and around the face, just separating the side and front. Just want to see how that's looking in terms of shapes. All 
Alright. Getting somewhere. Chin is still far too wide. Let's go down here. Really narrow it down. Come down to a point. From the top. Not bad. All right. And then I'm going to just pull the eyes a little lower by squashing the facial features. You can make a face appear more young. Make that just a little more stylized than what we were. A little too high. Felt too close to the top of the head. All right, so now I'm gonna Dynamesh and I'll just try around 300. 100, it would get a little messy down here around the mouth and I don't wanna deal with that. Um, and then of course, I'm gonna carve in a little. Give us some room to play with down here. I'll just use my move brush with a quick mask. And do the same thing here. I'm just giving myself some room. Dynamesh again. And we can look at the inside of our mouth, like that, if we want to come around and adjust it from the inside. That's fine. We can merge that. Well, I'll, I'll wait on the nose. I'll merge that down in a sec. Just sculpting to sculpt. That's right. Name of the game today is experimentation. I was talking in my last stream a lot about anatomy and how you can do specific studies or you can study a lot of stuff at once and that's that's not really super helpful so I recommend always getting in getting your hands dirty and finding those areas where you lack that knowledge the same thing is true here I'm getting in I'm sculpting and I'm trying to take steps back like this as often as possible to just refresh my eyes and once we get close to maybe an hour ish in we'll take a quick pause hang out and just talk for a little bit so that i can refresh my eyes probably move this off a screen or turn it around like i did with that skull that i was working on the other day all right let's do something with the eyes here working on azog from the hobbit i'm not familiar with which one azog is having a hard time seeing his forms behind the scar. I don't know how big his, oh, is he one of the uh, the orcs or whatever they're called? I'm not a big uh, Lord of the Rings nerd. Uh, so I don't, I don't know who Azog is or what those creatures are called. Azog. It's a cool name, though. You'll probably have to get into uh, get into Photoshop and you know do some kind of draw over before I start any big project, I always do a draw over. Just to make sure I'm understanding what I'm looking at. Look for the major forms, try to break it down.
I try not to show a lot of this kind of stuff whenever I do a time lapse because this is the super boring stuff. Poly modeling. Ew. Gross. Pull back on those eyes. They're way too far out. Feels way too awkward. Then we just need to pull forward on the brow. See this, like, swoop in there? That concavity? We'll fix that here in just a sec. Keep that messy, come back to it. Okay, we can merge this nose down. Need to clean this up a little. I actually want to figure out this cheek area a little more. Looking a little aggressive because of the angle here. One thing we can do, let's try this. Let's give us some lower eyelids. And for the lower eyelids, what I can do is kind of give this like a flatter edge to contrast the curvy edge. I'll have to raise up this cheek a lot to match this or else it's gonna feel really weird. I can start to head towards more of an excited look. Messy, messy, messy. Look how messy this is. All over the place. We'll fix it. We'll fix it. Sculpting takes time. Let me play with these lips for a brief moment, and then I'll get in and remesh this, combine all the stuff, and clean it up, and then it won't look so, so awkward. I did not use any brush for the eyelids. I just cut off the geometry and Z-remeshed it and cleaned it up. No brush. That's just a duplicated eyeball that I cut up. All right, and then for your mouth, you don't want to remesh before, sorry, you don't want to remesh after closing up the mouth. You want to leave the mouth open like I have it, or else you'll fuse the geometry there and it'll defeat the whole purpose. All right. I'm also very comfortable having a sculpt look awkward or creepy or whatever. I don't care, because I know it'll look better later. Just gotta get the f forms here correct, these primary shapes. I'll get there. I'm trying to like get some rounder shapes through here. Something like that. Don't hate that. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes I put my reference up with my sculpt to check proportions. Depends, like... If it's got, like, really warped perspective, sometimes I can actually be detrimental to your process because you can just confuse yourself by trying to line things up that will never line up. 
because the perspective's really strong or something's cheated really hard. But yeah, I, I don't see anything wrong with it, you know. You use whatever tools you can. I think it's fun to uh, get practice by not lining things up, if that's a skill that you want. Get really good at practicing your eye. I should put some color on this as well here in a moment. So we're not just looking at a black and white or gray sculpt here. This ear is so messy. That kind of worked. Really trying to clean that up. Get something nice. Okay, let me look at that from the side. Okay, another thing I really like to do is for the back side of my ear, start to blend this into the head, pull that back, something like that give some more geometry here. Fill a lot of this in. Merge this neck down. We'll merge everything down now, mostly. What resolution am I using? Whatever I need. I don't even look up here. 800,000 polys? I could care less. I have no idea how many polygons I have at any one moment. It's just however many I need. I use Dynamesh. Is it too much resolution? I lower it. Is it not enough? Do I need more polygons? I raise it. That easy. How do I know how many polygons I need? Practice. I sculpt a lot. You try sculpting something, you're not sure if you have too many, you're not sure if you have not enough, you don't have enough experience. Sculpt more. I get in, I'm trying to make a shape. I realize, ah, I can't make it. I need more polys. I raise the resolution. I'm looking at something like this. Eh, it's a little high, I could probably lower it. Do I care? No, my computer's fine. Unless it's like hindering me in some way, then I'll lower it. See this big, thick lower eyelid? We're gonna make it really thin because it's gonna make the character look even more happy, more like they're smiling. Having a really thick lid there indicates a change in form. That's gonna feel really awkward. It's almost, I'm, I'm actually gonna make these lower eyelids pretty much disappear entirely. They're gonna blend in almost completely. What's up with these ears? When did you turn your poly paint on? I did not do that. I did not say you could do that. Let's see. Are the ears in a decent position? Sure. Are they too big? Are they too small? I can adjust that later. Let's merge them. Put them in. Put me in, coach. Put my ears in. I 
I used to print a lot of my sculpts. Yeah, I, I haven't in a while. The last thing I printed was for a friend. It was the little character that he had had uh, commissioned. And he wanted to paint. So I did that on my resin printer for him. Character's kind of feeling a little generic. Might have to do something crazy. Try something new. Alright, perspective. Doing us some favors there. I always toggle perspective on and off while I'm working. I never keep it on for any length of time, and I never keep it off for any length of time. Always swapping back and forth. I prefer not working with perspective when I'm close up, like I am right now, because it can actually cause some weird issues while you're trying to rotate around your model. All of a sudden you're like, getting a weird amount of control because your brush is sampling a weird position. Uh, that's fine. Let's remesh that. And then I'll add color. Let's do... Five is probably fine. Yes, Bar Keegan, you did expose yourself as a Lord of the Rings nerd. That's okay, though. My wife is a Lord of the Rings nerd as well. When uh, we had started dating, actually, years ago, I had made the terrible mistake of uh, confusing Sauron and Saruman, which are two different characters in Lord of the Rings, but have extremely similar sounding names Sauron, Saruman, like they're pretty much the same name like one syllable difference a couple extra letters so I made this terrible this grievous mistake and I've never lived it down I like Lord of the Rings but I'm not like some some Lord of the Rings fanatic you know like my wife she knows all the lore She used to have uh, some, like, Lord of the Rings trivia game growing up. And I have nothing against Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is cool. I'm just not a super fan. I didn't grow up with it or anything. I grew up with a lot of Nintendo IP. Which you could probably guess based on the music choice for the day. Head's a little big. Up top, I mean. Another great reason to have the transpose line. You can measure. You can actually measure with it. Look, number of units. You can measure stuff. That's nuts. Can the 3D gizmo do that? No, no it can't. All right, I told you it would get more clean. I just wanted to get all the other stuff in there before I clean it up, because if I do that first, like if I clean it up and then add more stuff. I'm just gonna have to clean it up again, and I don't want to do that. It's a waste of time. So I'll have it look awkward for a little while, and you guys can make fun of me. That's fine. I don't mind. Alright. Let's adjust our lip shape here. Top lip. Give it more of an angle. I'll give it some more volume. I'll move the teeth. And we'll give this some color, too. I'm 
And the great thing is, once I get most of these facial features in place, like, there, I can take what I have and then turn that into so many different characters. So, you know, once I have this, most of the stuff in, I can really kind of take this any direction I want. Although I don't, I don't hate the direction right now. Got a lot of Azog fans in, in chat today. I'm gonna have to look up this Azog. Whoa, my nose got super squished. So squish. Excuse me. Need a little more depth for these eyes, I think, for that inner corner. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna just turn off that lower lid, and you'll see what I'm talking about here. What I was talking about earlier, where the lower lid is kind of almost going to just blend in here. It'll look a lot nicer. Because this cheek and that eyelid are essentially pushing up and kind of forming into one larger shape. breaks your brain, that's because you're not used to it, you know? Anytime you try to learn something new, it's gonna be difficult. It's not all that complicated. You're also watching somebody who's used it for a decade, just kind of going about my process. I've sculpted a lot, and I've used the transpose line a lot. All right, let's, um, let me fix the mouth just a little more. And then I'll uh, add some color. Trying to force the geometry in a specific direction there. Trying to push it up a little more. That's why I'm wrapping that curve around like that. And, uh... I'll do color, and then I'll add in a tongue and do some more cleanup, so. Grab my material over here. And we'll just grab a base color. We'll just fill something in. Maybe a little more orange, a little more that way. What I like to do is just start with the base color, and then I kind of play around Filling in some different colors here and there. For the eyes, I'll just do pure white toy plastic. And for the teeth, I'll just do pure white as well. I'll add in a quick tongue and then I'll do some more painting. Not not as much as I would like. Uh, so the question was, do I, being a Nintendo fan, do I still have time for like new releases? Uh, so like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, right? Amazing game, super fun. Uh, my wife and I, Abby, have been playing that and we have done two of the like 
main areas. We've played it a lot, you know, but, you know, we still haven't beat it. If I, you know, <laughs> you just don't have as much time as you did when you were growing up. But I try to play, like, a lot of the major ones. Like, I think probably my favorite, like, most recent was Super Mario Odyssey. I absolutely loved Odyssey. Such a good game. And that was a while ago. And I definitely want to get uh, Super Mario Wonder. Although that game looks like it's probably going to be super easy. I'm hoping that uh, you know, it's got some challenges like Odyssey did. Where not every single one is super easy. But, you know, they're, they're made for a wide audience, so... I really like difficult platformers. They're some of my favorite games. But I, I don't play like every single Nintendo release. Not even that I don't have time, it's just in some ways I don't want to. A lot of the time, the games that I play, play anymore are um, games that I can play with other people. You know, just with my friend group, I really enjoy playing uh, Overwatch. Because that's just a nice game that you can play with friends and just kind of hop on. So I enjoy those types of games a lot. Alright, let's do Sphere Append. Go a little more reddish. Slide on down. And do a quick tongue. Then I'll do some more painting. Paint can be a great way to figure out some different stuff with your character, some proportions and such. So I'll be using it for that. Let's go down here for a sec. Need to adjust that head from the profile. I'll do that here in a moment. Battlebit Remastered. I'm not familiar with the Battlebit series. Will AI replace artists? I have no idea. I am not a soothsayer. I don't think so. It won't replace me. I'm going to continue making art. I uh, like making art for the process. Talked about this in a recent video. I like making art. I don't necessarily love the end result. You know, the final artwork. I enjoy what I'm doing right now, which is creating. I find creating to be really enjoyable. I really love that. I, I love creating. And uh, I say in this recent video that if you're getting into art and your goal, your one thing is that you want to have a nice image at the end, then you might want to think about some things. Not to say that that is wrong, but you can pretty easily hop into a piece of software, type in a few words, and get a pretty good looking image rather quickly. So if your one goal is to make good image, and you don't necessarily enjoy the process at all, you might want to learn. But who knows what the future holds? I do not. And anybody who says one way or the other is wrong. So with paint on your sculpt, start super strong just like you would with a primary form. 
and then slowly step it back. Oh, uh, Greg, I do know what game you are talking about. Yeah, that, that game does look really fun. What was it called? Battle Bit? Battle Bit Remastered? Yeah. That did look fun. I might have to... That is a gross color. Hold on. I might have to try that. And the gameplay. Yeah, I know the graphics aren't amazing, but the proximity chat, the... Yeah. Yeah, it looks fun. It looks fun. And those, those are often... I, I'm not like a huge fan anymore. I used to play like a lot of a lot of FPS stuff, but it's unfortunate that like a lot of online games kind of tend that direction anymore for uh, online multiplayer stuff. Not that I really dislike FPS, but you know, there are other genres out there. Now that you've been drawing a lot, are you going to, or how have you been, sculpting your designs? Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, I... Let's go to, let's go to old Folygon's YouTube channel. What? Folygon's streaming? Oh my god. Uh, oh, where is it? Normally it's at the top, because it's my current, uh, welcome channel. This one. Uh, sculpting my own sketch from start to finish. This is the first time I sculpted one of my own 2D sketches into a 3D character. So uh, check it out. I really enjoyed working on that character. It's a really short video, so I did some. Uh, I spent a long time editing that video. Probably a little too long. Uh, would recommend checking it out though. Uh, and yeah, that is definitely something that I want to do more of. Taking my own 2D stuff and translating that into 3D characters. I find that to be uh, really enjoyable. Um, I find drawing to, in general, be really enjoyable. In a lot of ways, I actually... Now hear me out. Don't cry blasphemy. I actually enjoy drawing more than I enjoy sculpting. <laughs> Drawing's just so fast, guys. It's so great. It's so, so fast. And sculpting is so, so slow. Even when you've been sculpting as long as I have. And I am faster than many, many sculptors. Alright, let's neutralize the colors. The way you do this is just sample your model and fill it in gently. That's, that's not the color I want. Let's go here. Eh, that's... That's actually, you know, I I don't hate what I have. Let's go a little more red, then a little more neutral. Okay, let's do that. And then from the side, see how flat it is? Like I said, I'll adjust that in a moment. I just wanted to finish what I started with the paint. As much as I talk about jumping around a lot, it's also good to just make sure you get all your stuff done. So let me finish this real quick. Like I said, I'm not afraid for it to look weird or awkward for a moment. So we'll just mask that. Blend our mask out. And we'll just fill that in. Give that a darker color inside the mouth. And let's do this. Oh, whoops. Nah, that's fine, actually. I'm just lowering this poly count. A 
Just real quick. There we go. Just something like that. That works. Um, what was I gonna do? But I was gonna oh, adjust the face from the side. That's right. Drawing is fun, I agree. Voxel sculpting in VR. Yeah, yeah, I know. The whole medium fiasco. We'll see what happens with all of our other favorite softwares. The whole subscription service game is it's coming for us all, right? Uh, currently, I have been streaming on uh, Mondays, around this time. At least what I've been trying to do and what I have time for right now. See how awkward that gets in the corner? I'll fix that in a moment. This is also like really square right through here. So I need to pull in. Start it up top. And that'll start to round it out. That's a little too much through here still. Here. So when you uh, like do this big kind of smile, your cheeks ball up right through here, right? So what I'm doing is I'm carving underneath that to help, one, exaggerate that, but mainly the reason is to round out this area for the mouth. So all these shapes are interconnected, you know? You got one problem and you're trying to solve it. Sometimes you gotta look around at your other areas and say, oh, well, actually, there's a problem here, and maybe fixing that will fix something else. But I've been, I'm, I'm obviously gonna soften this shape because it's way too hard, but you know, I've been sculpting for a long time, so it's more of just kind of creating the feeling that I want right now rather than just trying to fix a million problems. The main thing I'm doing right now is profile view. So right through here, I don't like this distance a lot. It feels really big, it feels very long, which doesn't match the rest of the character. So by shortening that, you give the character less of a giant chin and jaw. And that also helps to shrink the face a little. Alright, so just silhouette wise, I think we could probably go a little more here. I am using a hotkey for blur mask, and that's because the control tap for blur mask is a different algorithm than the blur hotkey button. It's a good observation that you've made. So it's a little difficult to probably see on stream. Let's see, where is our masking menu? There it is. So there's a button here that says blur mask. I have this set to the hotkey of control B. You can see it right here. It'll pop up right there if I hover, control B. So if you can control tap right here, I'll control alt tap, that hardens the mask. So control tapping, see how it blurs toward the direction of the mask? I'll undo. Now if you click on the blur mask button, it blurs not only toward the mask, but also toward the unmasked side. I don't know why they designed it that way. I actually, if I had to guess, I'd say that the control tap was like a rewritten, or it's not even the same, like obviously it's not the same code, but I think they like 
they didn't reuse the same algorithm, same code there. I don't know why it's that way. It shouldn't be that way, but I blur that direction occasionally. For instance, if I'm blurring an arm or a neck, right? You know, I'd, I'd, hey, another reason why, you, you know, transpose line, I'll control, click, and drag. And I'm like, okay, well, here's my neck, but I don't want to like accidentally blur up towards the top, so I'll just control tap. But yeah. That is why I have a hotkey set. Also, it's a lot faster because you can just hold it down. Blur. Blur, 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 blur. Blur it like crazy. All right, I'm gonna have to remesh this because that star is in an awkward spot right here. I might not have to. I'll play with it a little more. I would like to remesh it, I'll say. All right, lots of things still need adjusting here. I'm gonna work on this for, for a little. It's too thick up here. It needs to thin out as it goes towards the corner. And all things, you know, taper. We don't want tons of parallel lines. They look really awkward and inorganic. And they don't exist really in reality, in organic shapes. There's always paper or some like, you know, slight kind of change. So I'm also going to kind of pull in on that shape and try to give that a more interesting feel rather than just being like, you know, you. Maybe, you know, a little pull in like that, something. Add some different character to it. I just realized I still have yet to paint the eyes. I'll do that here in a moment. No, no, no hidden hotkeys. Just a custom one. I have a lot of custom hotkeys here. Custom pop-up menus, etc. I have another one too. You guys probably don't see that one very often. That's just a few extra brushes hidden away. For all my brushes that I have at the bottom, I probably use about five of them most of the time. And uh, yeah, let's do an eye. Pupil. A papyrus, pupil iris. Beautiful. Um, what color eyes? What color eyes should we do, guys? What color eyes do you have? I have green eyes. The rarest eye color. All right. I like to hand paint my eyes, but for this, we're just going to do something really simple. I'm also going to pull out here a little, so this kind of represents the lens, and that's going to take that eye reflection and shift it down, just based on the shape of the curvature there, which is, I the light is just in the default position right now. I can move it over here to the side, down below, creepy lighting, right? But that's where we would normally see it, up top. You know, typically we're in a room with lights above us, or we got the sun. And, uh, here, I'll just do this. I'm not going to do uh, an actual pupil. I'll just do some quick paint. Quick gradient. Something like that. That works for now. I'll do an eyelash. An eyelash adds a lot of character. Can help frame the eye. It's a very nice graphic shape as well. This is way too thick. Ah, dang eyeball. 
poking through. All right, we're getting a little too chucky in the eyes of the doll. Let me do an eyelash real quick. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I'll do like oval eyes. I'll play with the shape a little in that regard. But a lot of the time I like to use round eyes. Most of the time. Alright. I'm gonna repurpose what I already have here. I'm gonna use that for an eyelash. Just fill it in with black. Oh, maybe not. There we go. Repurpose as much as you can. Luckily, I had some clean geo there. We'll do some hair and some other stuff in a little bit. This stuff takes time. One thing, one thing at a time. Yeah, the lower eyelids aren't going to be on there. Th this will represent the lower eyelid. So... We can see what it looks like real quick. Maybe do something very gentle. Very subtle. And then make it something like that. Yeah, even with that, I would still blend it out. So we're just going to delete that. This is what we have. And, you know, if I do anything here, I might... So I explained earlier how these two shapes, this lower eyelid and this shape of the cheek raising up, it's going to blend in together to create just one singular shape. So that's what we have going on there. The uh, angle for this eyelid is incorrect, I'm noticing. Um, let me do this. There we go. So it's, uh, the angle of the upper eyelid is perpendicular to the center of your eyeball, which sounds confusing, but what that means is that this plane Stop it, quick save, go away. We don't need saves. Saves are useless. Um, so this plane, this purple plane, needs to be, what the heck? Needs to be flat, heading towards the eyeball. Let me show you. There we go. So like this plane, the direction it's facing, heading, needs to be heading towards the middle of the eyeball. And right now it was, or previously before I started working on it, it's kind of off. So I'm working to fix that. The reason why it needs to do that is because it needs to catch the light in a way that makes sense. how we would anatomically expect. Even stylization has anatomical truths, right? That's why we like them. They look like us a little. Not entirely, but idealized versions of ourselves. play with this a little more here and probably move on to a couple other areas. Don't want to work on one area too long, even if it, you know, still looks awkward after I play with it for a little while. 
I still like to jump around a little. Give me something to come back to. Get a nice break visually from working on the same area over and over and over again. The more we uh, raise this up, this lower lid slash cheek, and cover up the iris, the uh, more happy this character will look just because we're giving it this really extreme expression right through there. So I'm going to push on that expression a little more. I don't necessarily want to like curve it the other way. I think that goes too far. So if anything, I'll kind of keep that a little more straight. Something I haven't used during this sculpt, AccuCurve. Give us a little bit of a point. And a little more pinch through here. Jumo, welcome, welcome. I can't, e <laughs> can't even imagine sculpting realism. <laughs> Who would do that? What a waste of time. It's all about stylization, baby. I actually agree. Uh, I I don't. The reason why I don't do a lot of realism is because I, I I don't. You know, for all the 2D to 3D stuff I do, I don't always want to just try to copy something from life. Like what I'm doing right now, I want to create something new. That's you know, there's things that have existed like this before, but never this exact one. I think that's fun and interesting and makes me enjoy the process even more. Hyperrealism. There's no such thing as hyper-realism. It's either realism or stylization. Anybody who's, you know, if, if it's not realistic, it's stylized. That's all there is to it. You know, obviously there's a spectrum, but if it's not realism, then it's stylized. Anything other than realism is a, a form of stylization. And you can, uh, you know, post your, your work and say like, oh, uh, it's stylized. And we're like, eh, we know what you were going for. We know, we know you were trying to do something realistic and now it just kind of worked in your favor posthumously. I remember that being a thing when I started sculpting. You'd see... You know, oh, does this look like blah, blah, blah? And they're like, well, it kind of looks like that actor or whoever. It's like, oh, well, it, it, it's, hey, it's stylized. Stylized, man. Why didn't you say that in your original post? Uh, 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 uh. Forgot. What's, what's some of the other classics? First sculpt, first art, just a sketch. Come on, man. We know that's not just a sketch. We all know you spent hours and hours and hours on that sketch. We see you. We know. You're not fooling anybody. Michelangelo up here sharing the David. Just a sketch. Just a sketch, guys. It's just a sketch. Meanwhile, years and years and years of labor. Just a sketch. Where is insert? Insert, insert. There it is. 
Wah, not what I want. There we go, that's the one I want. Too lazy to switch my operation to bevel. Just do that, do some manual bevels. Gotta get in and adjust the polys sometimes, guys. They're not gonna adjust for you. All right, let's work on something other than the eyelid and eyelash for a brief respite. Still work on the eyes though. Oh, we need some eyebrows. What am I doing? Everything looks so weird without eyebrows, doesn't it? Something. See, this is what I do. I'm like, I'm so worried about my form, and I just, I'm like, oh yeah, eyebrows. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, eyebrows. We'll do some eyebrows. Let's use my eyebrows. <laughs> Start there. I don't really try too hard with eyebrows, I'm gonna be honest. I just like do a basic shape like that. And I'm like, yeah, sure, it looks good. I'll edit it later. I just do the mask initially to uh, get the basic shape. She, she's looking too surprised, actually. Oh, I don't like how high they are. I'll adjust them in a moment. We'll also do some hair. Hair will take a little while. That's why I haven't done it yet. Gotta make the face look, look good. It, 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 it's abstract art, guys. It's my interpretation. Come on. What's the uh, the wolf? Hold on. Wolf perspective, pers personality, <laughs> perspective. The wolf perspective meme. You guys know what I'm talking about? Where is it? Oh, there it is. I see him. Hold on. I want to find the original. Yeah, this thing. <laughs> it's just, guys, it's my art style. Come on. Guys, it's just my art style. This is just how I do it. it, it it's just my art style. It's abstract art. Come on. It does take me about 10 hours to make something that looks like a sketch in ZBrush. Hey, that's fair. You know, sculpting takes time. No reason to uh, sprint. No reason to rush through it. Just cleaning up some quick edge loops. Now, could I have inserted a curved tube and done this faster? Maybe. But I didn't know what shape I wanted for the eyebrow. And then I lazily decided that whatever my first thing that I drew was fine, so, you know, it's whatever. Stop judging me. I'll just do black for now. I'll change it later. Uh, a lot of people do stylized work without the foundation of doing realistic work. You gotta know the rules before you break them. Not true. Not true at all. Completely untrue, completely false, actually. If you wanna do stylized work, you should do and practice stylized art. I say this all the time. If 
you want to do realistic art, you should do and practice stylized art. If you want to get better at sculpting, you should sculpt. You should not draw, you should sculpt. If you want to get better at drawing, why would you sculpt? No, you should be drawing. Is one going to inform the other? Is one going to make you better at the other? Yes. But what's going to make you better than a side thing? The main thing. Is running going to make you better at rock climbing? Probably because you're going to get healthier, but rock climbing is going to make you better at rock climbing. What? Well, when you phrase it that way, ugh! Folly gone, you got me again, man. I don't know, I feel like art is this thing that people look at and is like, it's this magic box that people don't understand. It's literally no different than anything else. You do not need anatomical foundational ideas to be good at stylized art. This is not true. You do not need to practice realism. You do not need to even know what's going on underneath the surface. You don't. This is not true. Will it help you? Will it inform you? Yes. It will help and inform your decision making. Got another pinch for it over here. But you don't need it. It's not the end all be all. People are very misinformed with this idea. That's why I say it all the time. Get better at stylized art, make stylized art. Copy other stylized artists. Learn from them. You want to get better at realism? Copy realism. Study from realistic artists. No brainer. So obvious, it's insane. I don't know if I like this expression. Maybe we'll just change it entirely. <laughs> me, me on any sculpt. Hey, this is why you don't, don't, don't bake an expression. Polygon says. One hour later. Oh no, I'm not sure if I like this expression I baked into my sculpt. <laughs> That's okay, we'll fix it. I'm not gonna change it. I'm just gonna make it work. Too deep, too deep eye corner. Eye corner too deep, need fix. Need to fix eye corner, eye corner bad. I'll fix eye corner, make eye corner better. Come on. There we go. Alright. Neck's long. Neck too long. Weird triangle body too thick. Speaking of weird triangle body. Just weird triangle body. I'm not really gonna do anything with this. Cause I just wanna do the face. Just wanna sculpt a head. But I'll give this a little a little bit of form here. And then I'll probably do some hair. And that'll give me a nice break from uh, the face for a little bit. You know, I talk about taking visual breaks a lot. But that doesn't mean you necessarily have to step away from your computer or whatever. It means you could also work on something else, like your hair. And that is what I'm going to do. That's why I also tote jumping around on your sculpt a lot to be a really great way to refresh your eyes and just make sure you're not noodling in one area too long. What's up, Cole? Welcome. Just started sculpting, want to print my own sculpts. Yeah, yeah. I think you, uh, if you're just getting started, I would say, you know, learn the basics and try. And, you know, if you come back and you have some specific questions, I might be able to help you out, but start with the basics. 
That's way too sharp. I don't really care. We'll come back to it. Oh, uh, what should I do here for hair? I'm trying to look up some hairstyles. Mm. I'll adjust the expression later. We need to take a break. Do some hair. First thing to do, make a quick hair cap. Turn the color off for a little while as well. Just focus on shape. Focus on form. Turn off perspective. With perspective off, things are going to look a little weird too, but that's okay. Let's do some more chopping. Clean up the edge, remesh. Art is art? I agree. Family Guy Wolf, is that what that is? Is that what that's from? Family Guy? A wolf meme? It's just my art style. There are a lot of styles, yeah. What's your style? What's the folly gun style? The titular folly gun style. Probably something a little Disney Pixar like. A little Nintendo inspiration here and there. Stylized. It's my favorite one. All right, quick hair cap. Just something to have a base for us to put some hair on top of. You enjoy the Loomis method for drawing heads. Yeah, it can be helpful. It's a good way to get started. All right, let's grab, let's grab our curve brush. Thirst Pixar, wow. And the truth comes out. Thirsty Pixar. Damn, been called out. All right, I, I was gonna use a curved brush, but I think uh, I'd prefer to do just like a, maybe a basic ponytail or something back here. Maybe not basic, what's going on? Get, get out of here. Get, 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 get out of here, subdivs. Don't need you. If, uh, if I do curves, I'll do it afterwards. Working on some basic shapes back here. Pixar mom. Nice. The titular Folygon style Pixar mom. I guess I 
I should be giving my characters more of the, 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 what's her name? Elastigirl? Give, give them more of the Elastigirl style, you know? What, I don't even know, if, what, what other Pixar moms are there? It's the only Pixar mom that comes to mind. Alright, I don't want to do a ponytail. I lied. I'm a liar. Give me some curves. Adjust some magic sliders. Boom. That's how you become a better sculptor. You gotta know about the magic sliders. If you don't know... I can't tell you. They're a secret. Only the masters know about them. I think you're, you're kind of giving yourself away a little here, talking about how many Pixar moms there are. I feel, feel like you're kind of, thou doth protest too much. Oh, there's so many Pixar moms. Let me, let me show you my list. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down. My computer was chugging there for a moment. Freaking out. You want to dynamic subdivide a half, half a million polygons while live streaming? What? Impossible. What do I need? Just need to yoink some geometry. Alright. I'm going to turn off symmetry here while I play with this hair. How do you smooth hair? Uh, geometry, you activate dynamic subdivs. Make sure Dynamesh is on here. Um, all right, let's, let's get some more volume here. Some simple shapes. are just gonna all be blended in these are just placeholders and uh, hmm probably have a few pieces that remain split off but let me play with it a little more chart on the wall with your pins and strings showing all of the the lineage of uh, Pixar moms I assume nice all right let's just merge uh, 
Yeah, we'll just merge that together, sure. Just kind of playing with the shape. Figure out what we want. Play with it a little more. We're gonna do like longer hair, but blown off to the side or something. Blowing in the breeze. Grab a snake hook. You know. But then I have to sculpt more hair. And do I want to sculpt more hair? Not really. We'll have to fix some things in the face. Let's keep playing with the hair though. That's why we do this, to refresh our eyes. Come back with fresh perspective. How do you flip? Mirror. I believe it's down under modify topology. Sorry, no, it's under, uh, where are they? Deformation, mirror. Mirror and weld is in the modify topology menu. Learn all the little buttons before you get in and you gotta make sure you know the software. You're getting in here trying to make something, especially a character. Gotta learn where these functions are. Learn the tool before you try to use it. I know it's a complex tool, complex software, but gonna be a lot better off rather than just getting frustrated having to look stuff up every single second and that part where you feel lazy I um I, I like sculpting hair because it's kind of just flowy and therapeutic you know get in and play around with shapes takes a while I don't feel like I have to you know rush or necessarily think too hard I'm just taking my time sculpting some water some nice flowy shapes Tomodachi music? Yes. Might it might have been Katamari. Wasn't paying attention. Gotta make sure the hair is not going into anything there. And now I'm just looking for ways, you know, I've created a lot of shapes here. So now I'm just trying to find ways to connect these shapes together. 
nothing really to it other than that. Where I see anything weird or awkward, like three shapes in a row that are just kind of parallel to each other, I'm like, that, that's, that doesn't look good. Let's try something else. Play around with it. It's still there. Let me get rid of it. My resolution's a little too high here. Start rough. Carve into the surface. The shape is really even here. So I'm gonna split it. See how even that looks? This looks, you know, inorganic. Not something you would find in nature. So I'll try to make it less symmetrical. Like over here. Well, simple, clean shape. Play with thickness, too. Kind of curl that in on itself. All right, we're starting to get some fun shapes. Like I said, hair is nice and chill. up. Very messy through here. And that's what I'll do here for a little bit. Just kind of clean up what I already have while adjusting, continuing to push my shape. And this is all one piece, so I'm just going to have one larger chunk and then uh, do some separate pieces to add visual interest. Just like a couple secondary shapes. Eh. I don't really like that. Alright, a few more minutes on the hair, then I'll go back to the face. Modify the spacing of a brush? Yes. Yes, there is. I'll show you here in just a sec. Like to do stroke lazy mouse so you can use lazy mouse but additionally in your brush menu refresh that samples mm, I believe it is samples so for instance if you're using let's see find a brush so a lot of brushes by default in ZBrush will use the dots function. So kind of like in Photoshop, you know, it's applying a stamp. That looks like a smooth brush stroke that I'm drawing out there. But actually you can, you can see where some places it gets like a little bit of a gap between it. And that's because it is doing, let me see, where is it? Modifiers? Somebody remind me. I know it's here somewhere. 
But anyway. I wouldn't recommend adjusting it in here. The reason why I don't is because your computer can start to lag and get really slow. So instead what I recommend doing, the thing, the reason why I said I like to use this is because you won't get that slow down. So lazy mouse, turn lazy mouse on, and here. See that little red line following my brush? One, look how clean that is. But we can decrease that if you don't want that to be quite as lazy. You can put this all the way on one so it's not going to have any lazy stroke to it. And when I do that, you can see how smooth that's getting. Stair-stepping at the end, so what you can do is you can decrease the lazy step if you'd like to do that. That was also just because of the way I did it. But you can see I get a much cleaner brush stroke that way. So that's the method that I prefer. I'll turn that off of my brush. Yeah, I, I know about the the lazy, the lazy step. Not that you can actually affect the sample. Is it sample? See now it's gonna bother me. The samples. You can adjust how much it applies to the surface manually, but if you try to increase it, like I said, it will uh, start to slow your computer down very quickly like very intensive on your machine. All right, so we got some simple geo here. Let's turn our poly paint back on and we'll make some adjustments to our face and uh, a couple other areas. Get some nice white hair. Um, I don't know. We'll just try something here. Reddish brown. Sure. Why not? Looks great. All right. So my face has a couple areas where the geometry is fighting me. I have a point here. I have uh, another one up here around my eye cavity that's, that's really quite annoyingly strong. I'm gonna try not to remesh because I really would prefer to just work with what I have. But if it keeps giving me issues, I will, I will change it. down. Let's make those a little more narrow. Trying to give those more of an interesting shape. A little more thick to thin. Something like that. I'm gonna flip this eyelash up, give it a little bit of a curve. Especially as that wraps around to the longer side. So it's not perfectly straight. And then it won't block off light from the eye quite as much. And it won't be quite as boring of a shape. Let's see. I'm not in love with the eye shape. I think the main issue is how even this feels. So what I'd like to do give this kind of like a, a nice eye hood right through here to help thin out the eyelid to give that more taper as it comes down towards the corner. 
Yeah, I think that cavity was just too much. I think that was what was bothering me there, mainly. Let me play with it a little more. So, get a little more room there. Make sure that's roughly framing. Right through there. Yeah. Alright, we'll, we'll put the eyelash back on and play with that more as well. Start with the hard edge, and then you can soften it. I always start with the hard edge. Understand my shape. Understand where it's changing directions. Then gently roll it back out. Alright, I'm, I'm going to have to remesh just because right through here, it's going to be really hard to control. Alright. I'll fight it. I'll fight it. Let me see. I really don't want to remesh. It's going to be very annoying to do so. It's going to T-pose. little caricature e right now caricature like i guess that's why we experiment though right play around had no idea what was going to come out of this sculpting stream do I like it? Meh. Not yet. I don't hate it though. That's the first step to liking something. Not hating it. Really, it's just going to be a series of pretty small changes to get me where I want. Let's go a little bigger on the eyes. Not the eyeball, though. Just the section around the eye. Turn local sim on. A little bit of scaling. Make sure I'm gonna scale these eyeballs up, but I don't want them to touch in the middle. I'm gonna be really careful of that. Because once that happens and you start messing with symmetry, it kind of starts breaking stuff pretty hard. Over defined then smooth, yeah. Pretty much. Hard to soft. Yeah, I mean, if you're good enough, 
You can sculpt a bunch of soft shapes, soft, soft organic shapes from the get-go. Absolutely, go for it. No reason not to. Save yourself some time. I like really getting some crisp shapes. Because then what you can do is you can go from a hard edge to a soft edge and get a really nice quality to your edges. Edge quality is a little bit more of an advanced topic though. So if it's not something that you're worried about right now, no big deal. Don't think about it too hard. All right, let's play with the cheek. My favorite part of this is once we hop out of a uh, transpose master, the uh, big changes that we get to see happen to our sculpt. Uh, how do I want to do this? Do it that way. All right, let's pull these eyes a little further apart as well. Let's do this. And let's work on that eye corner just a little more. Lots of little tweaks, you know? Little small changes add up into big changes. Just takes time. Trying to focus a little more here. Been using your uh, sharpen then soften tip. Nice, nice, nice. Let's see. Try to blend some of the nose a little more. I'll have to probably hop out of here to do some of this. Let's turn perspective back on for just a little. Let's find that edge flow. Wrapping up. Something like this. Help keep the roundness of that cheek coming forward. Whoa! Monster fuel, let's go. Just a little more. And from the profile, I want to make sure, sorry, not the profile, from the three quarter. That we're not getting too deep right here. Because I can feel a little awkward as well. It's really easy to sculpt on something from one side, one direction. And then you start rotating or turning things around. And you're like, oh no. Oh, oh, oh no. So, I try to rotate around as much as possible. Another thing that I have not done yet, that I will do here in a moment... It's called tucking the jaw corners. Very, very common for a Disney or Pixar style here to help keep this jaw corner feeling sharp and, you know, still defined. 
from the profile and a little bit through the uh, three quarter, but from the front, it really helps to round out the face, which is mainly what I'm going for here. So what are we doing here? We're just tweaking, we're just adjusting. We're tweaking out, tweaking out, come on. Just a little tweak, it's fine. Small adjustments. Finding little things where I can improve upon the character. Feeling more cutesy, less caricature. Not that there's anything wrong with caricature, it's just not the direction I wanna go in. That's called the alien phase. And there's nothing wrong with the alien phase. You uh, do not start drawing a character, right? Or painting, and after a few brush strokes, you don't say, oh, well, it looks weird. Uh, so, uh, it looks wrong, I need to stop. No, you're just in the beginning. Like, I've barely worked on this character at all. I could explore this character for an entire week and then some. But I don't want to spend that long on one thing here, experimenting. I'd rather experiment on multiple characters. I am a big fan of quantity over quality in most things, but in particular as someone that enjoys the process of creating a little more than the finished result. I, uh, I enjoy quantity quite a lot. All right, I really do like the roundness that I'm getting now from the front. I wanna be careful that I'm not getting too blocky from the top, like the sides of the face here. Just wanna try, this ear is being really annoying. Whoops. It's closer, closer to what I'm looking for. All right, that edge, I'll work on a little more outside of T-Pose. Hmm, let's see, what else? I haven't played with the mouth very much. Let's see, obviously we wanna keep that upper curve, that one, two, flowing through there or else it's gonna start feeling a little inorganic. Let's go back, let's go back for a little bit. Let's take a look. And play with this area a little more. So now we can start adjusting. We'll watch as all these changes take effect to our T-pose mesh. Main change being the size of our eyes and the distance apart. Starts to adjust them quite a lot. Heading in a better direction. And now this area plus the mouth is something I wanna play with. So I'm trying to, and then right through here. Keep that roundness. Okay. the edge that I'm getting through here. Soften that quite a bit though. Edge control, right? Starts sharp, goes soft, vanishes entirely. That is called edge control. 
Okay, we're getting too thick right through here. Could make the eyes bigger, or I could just thin this area out right through here. Or do a combination of both. Let's try a... I might need to go back into T-Pose. Let me see. Let's try... I'm going to try to do it without Transpose Master, because I think I can just do this real quick. Eye is a little une... Uh, uh, sorry, not uneven, but too even. So I need to kind of shift one of the edges out. Avoid that symmetry because it looks very inorganic. I can probably... Let me take a look at that eyelid from the side. That's fine. Really simple shapes here for the eyelash, eyebrow, etc. Same thing for the hair. If I'd like to refine and uh, adjust those, I definitely can. All right, I'm gonna go more thin on the eyelid and eyelash. Just doing the eyelash first because it's layered on top and it's a little hard to uh, see where the eyelid exactly terminates with this in the way. Cool, cool. And you'll notice my eyelid is still a separate shape. I haven't, I haven't merged that down because I knew I'd want to play with it. Oftentimes I won't merge them down. I probably will eventually. I just need to adjust a little more. Much easier to do here when it's separated, though. It's own piece. Very gently nudging that. Small changes here. Don't want to do too much at once. Subtlety here in the eyes in terms of changes. All right. A little too sharp on that edge now, I think. Now that we've started to change things up. T-pose? T-Pose combines your geometry temporarily. Then you can adjust everything at once. There is a tutorial that I just released on T-Pose or Transpose Master just last week. I believe. Your ad block has been updated. Ugh. Awesome, thanks. How and why to use Transpose Master in ZBrush five days ago. Go check it out. Transpose Master is awesome. I use it all the time. Very, very helpful tool. I use it at all steps of the process. I use it when I'm posing my character, but I also use it here to adjust things like proportions or just play with multiple pieces of geometry at the same time. As you just saw, you know, I could sit here like I was just doing and play with the the face subtool, the eyelid, the eyelash, all at the same time. Sometimes that's like kind of a lot to finagle with. And if you have more subtools than that, it's really frustrating. So that's where a transpose master can be super helpful. I'm gonna delete that. Still have yet to save. I'm sure quick save is doing us some favors. I normally don't even care, don't even check. So I'm not too worried about it. The most I'll ever lose at any point is like 20 minutes. 
And if I lost 20 minutes right now, it wouldn't hurt my feelings because now I know exactly the changes I want to make. I don't like quick save to go more often than that because then it just starts to get in the way. It becomes too annoying. So you gotta find that balance of what works for you. 20 minutes is what I use. That's about the default. Look at that chin strap. That's a cool shape. A little, a little overdone though, right? So looking at this, you know, you're confused. You're like, ah, I don't know how my forms are changing or how I want to change them. Just go through with a pinch brush, you know? Look, I can start to call out my shapes. I can bring them to your attention. See, you can see how that surface is turning a lot more when I put that hard edge on it, right? Not only that, but now I'll look at it from another angle. You guys can really see this. This is the kind of stuff that I'm looking at when I'm working on those soft shapes. Look how even this is. See how it's like parallel? This line is following itself. We don't want that. This doesn't happen in organic form. So what do we do? We'll make it more narrow up here towards the top. And then we'll widen it out towards the bottom. Then what will we do? We'll get rid of the hard edges. Because we don't need hard edges. We're sculpting an organic character. So something tight, whoops, tight up towards the top. And you know, you can even leave in a hard edge if you want. I don't here, it tends to age a character. I'm trying to make something that feels a little more, uh, a little more young. So I'm gonna avoid that. But if you're trying to create an older character, that can work really well. All right, I'm liking, I'm liking that a lot more from the front. Three quarter and profile needs some more work now. You know, we've, we've made some adjustments here from the front. We need to continue to progress on this from the three quarter inside without destroying what we've already done, which is sometimes the hard part. What would I do if I had to merge the head and body at this point? I would dynamesh them together and then re-z remesh. The only difference the only change I would make is uh, opening the mouth just a little here around the corners of the mouth because I wouldn't want this geometry to fuse together because then it would make opening my mouth uh, a little difficult. The other thing, so like here, you know what? Let's uh, give her like a simple shirt, right? Like a simple piece of clothing because that is the best way to hide a seam. You could use a necklace, you could use a, a collar, a jacket. You know, there's a lot of different ways you could go about that process, whatever kind of floats your boat or whatever you're doing for the character you're creating. A million different ways you can hide a seam. Uh, let's, what should we do? Like a collar or something? I don't know. Well, let me try it. Let's do this. Repurpose my geometry. I'll duplicate the head. I'll adjust that from the profile later. Let's focus on clothing. Try not to get distracted. Let's uh, slice like that. So I don't want to merge that with the body. I don't want to take the the uh, the time to do that. Uh, eyes are green. I like that. Let's do green. Maybe not that green. Maybe darker. Less saturated. It's a cool green. Body? No body. Now it's just a shirt. Boom. Now you can't tell. There's no seam line. Of course, we'll adjust this. Make it more interesting. More of a minty green, maybe. Just pure green, a little, little nasty color. <laughs> I once heard that artists don't like green, and uh, I don't know, kind of agree.
She looks Chinese. Could be because of the hood of the eye. Not necessarily a Chinese eye shape, but an East Asian uh, ethnic type of shape that you see for the epicanthic fold. That's what that area is called. All right, I just got a little hiccup there. Kind of scared me, so I'm gonna do a Z remesh. Or I'm sorry, a uh, quick save, not a Z remesh. I did do a Z remesh, but. Uh, all right, let's do. Don't Dynamesh, it spoils details. That's not true. Dynamesh high enough, it's fine. And you can always project, remesh, get it all back. Uh oh, I'm getting distracted, guys. I need to fill some of this in while I'm noticing it. Come back to the close in just a moment. I could Dynamesh this right now and not lose any information. Zero detail would be lost. See, that's the difference. I know how to use this in such a way. You know, I'm not like, oh, now it is step 14 in my process where I Dynamesh. Now it's step 15 where I Z remesh. Now. It's just a tool in my kit that I use whenever I need it. I kept saying I was probably going to remesh this because the area where I got the verts here, like this star, and in particular this point here and here were really annoying me while I was trying to sculpt, but I just dealt with it, and it's fine. It would be a lot easier though if I remesh it. I just don't didn't want to take the time to do that here on stream. Because I would want to do it with like a polygroup remesh. Look at that neck. Nice thin neck. A goose neck, if you will. Stylized characters gotta have geese neck. The most appealing shape. The, the neck of a goose. Alright, let's do a quick bevel. Whoa. It's freaking out on me. Hold on. There we go. Trying to keep that from just being round on the front. Z modeler now. Shrewd. Flip it. Do a quick bevel. could do some arms, do do a body, do some stuff, but don't really want to. We'll just do this. Okay, I really like, uh, you know, with this style, keeping the head and torso roughly the same size. I think that can be really fun. Proportional style. It's nice. All right. What am I looking for? Dynamesh. There, there she be. Maybe she's a young mom? I don't know. I don't really give uh, backstories to my characters very often. Not too often, at least. I think that can be a good way, initially, to form up ideas and come up with different shapes, decision-making. I just don't do it. Not very often. During the process, you know, a little here and there. This angle's a little too steep. You do need this slight angle to represent the trapezius. 
It's just a little too much. It's just a simple termination point, so it doesn't really matter. Pull it up a little. Looks fine. Alright. How are we doing on time? I have not looked at the clock. Two point five hours, no worries. Um, hmm. This feels a little boring. So let's just give it like I don't know, a little piece of filigree or something. Just reuse the geometry I already have, and I'll just give it kind of like a orangish gold edge up top. So I just took that piece of geometry and duplicated it. And now I'm just inflating it a little. Need to flip it because it's backwards. It's inverted. And that actually that that's fine. I was gonna like bevel the edges, but I'll just leave that rounded. Just like a little simple thing. Kinda looks like military almost. And uh let's see. Insert a quick sphere. I'll just give this like a little button. Ta-da! Feels maybe even more military doing that. Oh well, that's what we got. The short hair doesn't help. Or the lack of hair, I guess. Alright, well, there's still a lot that we can play with. I mentioned the three-quarter in profile of the face. I wanted to play with more. But I also want to play with the hair. Oh man, there's so many, so many fun things to play with. Let's see. The paint could probably use a little adjusting as well. Um, let's go for a darker color, just in a few spots. Bring a little warmth back in a couple areas. really easy to overdo this stuff so I that's why I start with like some big big paint strokes and then I kind of fade it all back later I'm trying to get some of it back in though all right profile three-quarter let's turn perspective on Gonna make some really minor adjustments here. Okay, face is just too square on the front plane. I'm trying to create round shape language. So I wanna have round shape language in all of my decision making. Uh, whether that be the shape of the eye or um, anything else, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to deviate from that too much. How do you export your sculpts to Blender without losing any quality? I use Decimation Master. So, uh, Z plugin Decimation Master, it's a default tool. 
Pre-process, decimate. You'll decimate the percentage down. You can use uh, use and keep poly paint, and then you can export that way. So that you keep all your poly paint and your form roughly the same. Additionally, you could create topology for your sculpt, low res, but if you're not gonna animate your work, then there's, you know, kind of zero reason to do that unless you just want the practice or you enjoy doing it. But I, I do not know anyone that enjoys doing retopology. All right, edge quality here. You know, I have not, <laughs> I feel like I got this nose in one shot earlier. This doesn't happen often, but I've barely changed this nose since I sculpted it. And maybe that means I need to look at this nose, but I felt, I kind of liked it. So I haven't really changed it. Yeah, I don't know. Let's go, um, hmm, I think I am going to go back to Transpose Master here for just a little bit to play with uh, a few more proportions. There are a couple things I want to do, namely uh, pull out the face from the profile or side view and uh, play with like a couple other things like maybe the, the size and scale of these eyebrows, call more attention to them. I can't believe it's already been nearly three hours. I'm actually very surprised. This actually has kind of flown by, um, which is good. But I feel like there's so much more I can play with with this character. You know, so much more I can adjust and change. So that's a good place to be, I think. If you're liking the direction on something and you're like, oh, well, I want to keep working on this and you know, keep improving it wanting to do this character in just one session so I might still call it at the end just to keep from uh, spending too long on any one thing I don't know we'll see see how it goes You have a poor spatial imagination. Weird question incoming. <laughs> I just can't figure out 3D sculpts. They just look off. Is there a way to train your spatial imagination? Absolutely. Practice, 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 practice. If things look off and you do not know why, that is because you do not have the experience to be able to know what is wrong with your sculpt. If I roll back on my sculpt and show you the weird awkward stages, you know, it's fine. It's totally normal. It's totally normal to have an alien phase. Things look weird. Things don't look good. It's whatever. It doesn't matter. You just know that, you know, I'm confident that it's going to go in the right direction. It's just going to take time. Because sculpting is a slow process. And it's not this instant gratification that you're gonna you're gonna get from the process. It's gonna take time, you know. I've been working on this character for a few hours, just experimenting, trying some different stuff, playing around. But I do know the changes that I want to make when I see the mistakes that I have. I wouldn't even call them mistakes. I would just say like the way it is now and the way I you know I want it to be. Like for instance, I'm looking at this ear and I'm like, oh, well this ear is you know maybe it doesn't look great. But that's because it's boring. It's like really like just oval shaped. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna get rid of the oval shape by just adding some taper. So now it's like wider up here and more narrow down here. Why do I know how to do that? Because I've sculpted it a lot and I know my, my fundamentals. This is the kind of stuff that I teach people in the Appeal Academy. I teach people fundamentals, how to make shapes look good how to sculpt things that look good. 
that look appealing. Does it take time? Yeah. Are you going to learn it overnight? Absolutely not. <laughs> if you do, I want some of whatever you're eating or drinking. Give me some of that. Did I mess up my eyeball? I might have messed up the shape of my eyeball. A little adjustment on the eyeball isn't too bad, but you don't want to warp it a lot, because then your reflection on it can be a little weird. Alright, there is one uh, kind of big change I want to make here to the eye shape that I know that I want to do from experience. And that is pulling the lower lid to be less far out than the upper lid. So this is anatomically what we expect for this shape is what happens in our own eyes. It's called eyelid order. And it can really help things with what I have going on from the profile. I do like that uh, eyebrow shape. I, I think my eyebrows and brow in general might still be too high up on the face. I don't know, it's kind of fun and expressive. Let me like, I don't know, try lowering it just a little just to feel it, feel it out. And everything's still symmetrical. So a little asymmetry can help this expression a lot too. Bring them back up. Why does it keep doing that? Being super weird. Yeah, but if things are looking bad and you can't, you know, you can't put your hand, your your finger on it, you're like, I, it looks off, but I just don't know why it looks off. That's just a matter of experience. That's all it is. Your eye can pick up that something is wrong, but your brain can't articulate that for you. That is what I help people do. Learn their fundamentals, sculpt. Give them the vocabulary and ideas to pick those areas out and improve upon them. Couple changes there. Hey, even better. One step at a time, right? And I can continue to do that again and again and again. As I do it more though, we enter what is called diminishing returns. This is when I'm spending a lot of time making changes that are no longer yielding the same amount of return. So, you know, the first time I spend an hour making some pretty drastic changes that really adjust the feel of the character and make things feel a lot better. The second time I do it, you know, yeah, it's still making a change, but not nearly as much as the first. And just slowly, you know, you get less payoff for the work that you put in the more you do it. Here's another parallel line next to another parallel line. What do we do with that? We get rid of it. I'm gonna add some taper. So the ear's smaller at the bottom. You could do this the other way. I think it looks better this way. Why? Experience, I've done it a lot. I'm gonna go from something that's thick to something that is thin. I'm noticing a really hard inorganic edge back here that I created earlier. I'm gonna go back over it, soften it. 
Shift smooth. Edge quality. Sharp edge up top. Gentle soft transition here towards the bottom. A little too much though. Push it a little too far. Do a little more. Kind of a cool shape. Eh, I lied. <laughs> it's too much. Honestly, the ear is kind of still boring to me. If anything, I'd add in a second shape. Anti-tragus kind of shape here. Um, my main issue with that is that it kind of pulls visual attention towards the ears. Honestly, it's just because it looks bad because it's just one brush stroke. So let me clean that up. I'm gonna experiment with that for a second. See if I can make that more interesting. Because it feels really, uh, the ears feel really boring to me. I think we need just a little more shape. Something to give them some, something else. The scariest part for you where it's almost perfect, but you don't want to mess it up. Ah, I... I'm not worried about messing stuff up. You can always get it back. You gotta undoes. Experiment. That's what this whole stream's about, experimenting. Sculpting some fun shapes, just trying stuff out. The uh, the worst thing you can do is just, you know, noodle around and not pro uh, progress on your, your sculpt or your character. That's no good. You got undoes. You got, it's a digital workflow. Save, save inversions, you know? Save this out as sculpt underscore one and then you know create a new version of it compare it to your last sculpt spend spend some time on it if you like the direction maybe you don't like what it looks like now but you you do like the direction and you know that you just need to work on it more yeah this this is nowhere near perfect but it's better than it was I remember I did a I did a a collab with um, Matthew Keane, who some of you might know, fantastic sculptor. But uh, one of the questions he asked me is uh, like, when you're sculpting characters, what are you looking for? Are you looking for like the perfect ideal or something like that? I, was like, I, I thought that was an interesting question. I don't think that's what I'm looking for though. I think I'm just sculpting. <laughs> I think I'm just trying to make, you know, things that I enjoy. I'm just sculpting around. I'm, I, I don't think that there's like some perfect style, perfect appeal. There's so much varied taste out there, you know? I don't think there's any one perfect answer. And I'm not searching, I don't think, for anything in particular, like with this exp exploration stream. I'm just here sculpting and seeing what happens, seeing what gets discovered. I think that's really fun. Or at least I find it really fun. Some people probably find that prospect scary. All right. I like the shape. It's a little uh, too hard and it's mirroring the other shape a little too much. But it's better than what we had. And with some smooth, softening that shape, it gets even better. Same thing here, too sharp. Smooth it out. Get more organic. Come on, come on Ben, what are you doing man? Ears are, are organic. Round, round. So here is the ear. Round. Always save your work. Me, who hasn't saved this yet. <laughs> uh, what did I use to reshape the ear? I used the move brush and my sharp soft brush. Carves in, pulls out. Beautiful. Beautiful. That is the brush that I used. 
uh, it's pretty much a standard brush with uh, a lot of adjustments, an alpha, and uh, some adjustments for lazy mouse. It's kind of like a Damien standard brush, but much softer. That's what I use for that. Alright. I like I like what's going on here. I wanna see something. Bear with me. Okay. Alright. I just wanted to round that out a little. Play with that. It's feeling too square, but I it actually it actually works. It's more of a square shape. What is it? This is just get out get out of here. Be more round. Be more soft. Come on. Alright. One other thing I want to just see. I mentioned earlier when I was working on the lower eyelid that this shape is going to kind of blend together, which as you can see it has. Nobody else has commented on it since then. So clearly it's working, but I want to see if I can give it a little more form, potentially improve it, give it a little more character. So it's going to get worse before it gets better, but bear with me. See how uh, low res that is? because my geometry is really getting stretched. I've been working on it for a while. This doesn't even have a million polys in the face. This is actually going to probably need a Dynamesh. Okay. Just experimenting here. So this can age the character a lot. So what I'm going to do is be pretty subtle here. Try to keep this more narrow, more thin. Take a step back. See how that really kind of... I'm keeping it hard right now just so you guys can see that. How it like adds bags under the eye. It makes them look older. It makes them look more tired. So you got to be careful when you do stuff like this. So we're going to go back through. Smooth. Soften. Clean it up. We're getting a real gentle transition now. Okay, we got a vert right there causing some issues. Clean it up. Okay. Adjust the shape a little more here. Trust the process. Okay. Alright, much better, I think. Just a little secondary shape there. Let's get a little tighter. Oh, yeah. Much better. Much more expressive. Alright. Now, if I wanted to work on that more, I think I would definitely go through. Clean up this geometry. Dynamesh to get rid of all these nasty points. And then, uh, remesh it again to get some cleaner topology. So go through the process of merging that down, blending that together, and my eyes have been facing perfectly forward this entire time. Which makes the character feel a little cross-eyed, so we're going to move that out. Alright, let me 
me check that from the side. Looks good. is maybe a little too thick and there's so much we haven't even done with the hair the hair is just kind of plopped on there really quickly and simply maybe we could play with that but we're kind of getting close to time here what do we think of the mouth character. It's big brain time. Oh, not what we want. Holly loop. Just a little buck teeth, you know, a little separation. Nothing too much, just a little. Okay, let me hide the teeth there for a moment. No bottom teeth. I'm just gonna do the, the top teeth. Okay. And this is just gonna be a real subtle shape in here. I haven't played with this since I inserted it, really. Okay, down mesh. Quick Ziri mesh, as low as possible. Perfect. Subdivide. Give it the paint. Beautiful. Voila. Easy peasy. We lost like a little bit of volume on the tongue by doing that, so. Scale it up. Awesome. How do you add tattoos? You would paint or uh, project them. So you could uh, import an image in your texture menu and use the spotlight tool. So uh, normally I use it for a reference tool in ZBrush. If you've ever seen an image in my top corner of my UI, so that's what I'll do. But uh, originally the spotlight tool was used for projecting paint. So uh, that is how I would probably do a tattoo. I would uh, draw it in 2D or have my 2D image and then use that and then project it onto the surface. Or you could uh, actually paint it. That, I mean, hate each their own. I'd probably start at least with the projection method. All right, well, let's clean up a little bit here and there. And let's see. Yeah, hair's pretty boring, isn't it? What do we do with boring hair? We experiment. So I'm trying some, like, bigger shapes that break the silhouette help you know give some more character so it's not just all flat and boring can i sculpt a dog's head yeah yeah i can i can and i have i can sculpt dare i say it any and everything not about you know just learning how to sculpt one thing it's about learning how to just sculpt sculpt form so yes I can sculpt dogs I can sculpt cats people do you name it 
If it's a... Got a three-dimensional form, you can sculpt it. I can sculpt it. Let's, uh, here. Go back and mirror that again. Oh, there we go. Refresh your eyes. You guys have probably been looking at it a little too long, too. Not nearly as much as me, though. You know, one thing you can do, you can take the hair and cover up one ear to uh, add to the asymmetry. You know? Starts to make it more interesting. Thank you, Ara. It's a matter of time. face tattoo could give her some character, yeah. <laughs> Probably. What are we thinking? Like, uh, a dragon? Alright, this is an accidental shape here. It just kind of happened. But I kind of, I, I like it. It's cool. Cool shape. Cool shape, bro. Don't want that. That was weird. Ah. There we go. It's actually kind of hard to see this. easier for me to work on it. Dark color is not uh, conducive to sculpting. Yeah, we will add uh, some secondary strands of hair, but we gotta get the main shape first. Secondary strands are accoutrements, you know? They're, they're, they're secondary. I mean, the primary shape to be good and interesting first. So, uh, you know, one thing we can do to exaggerate this even more from left to right is have this side be pretty straight and simple while the other side is much more visually interesting. This really helps to add contrast to the shape. We can have some of it, you know, some of this shape over here, but, you know, really contrasting that idea. Simple and complex. I render everything in Blender. I do not render in ZBrush. ZBrush's rendering is bad. I think it's objecti objectively bad. Of course, with Maxon, they released their new update, which allows you to render in Redshift? Question mark? Anybody? But I don't use Redshift, and I don't care about Redshift. Just render in Blender using Cycles. It's all I need for me. Has all the tools I need. Nice and clean. Pretty simple workflow. Uh, if you've ever seen any of my work, it's either a screenshot straight from ZBrush or done in Blender for a render.
And now I'm just continuing to find ways to clean up and interconnect my shapes. Keeping things interesting. And I'll add some secondary hair strands here in a moment. So somebody said earlier, you know, don't dynamesh, you'll lose all your your clean shapes. Well, look at this. This is dynameshed. Looks clean to me, though. <laughs> Just got to be good at sculpting. Got to have control over your shapes. Control your form. Ziri mesher, in some ways, can be a crutch for your sculpting. It's a great tool to clean things up, and I use it myself for that purpose, and I even recommend you use it for that purpose, but if you know what you're doing, you can still sculpt using Dynamesh, using Sculptress Pro, using whatever, doesn't matter, and still keep things clean. It's a fun shape. Liking that. Okay. Don't like that though. Kind of wanted to have a more round shape there. I'm starting to like this a lot. Good direction. Good direction. Shift. That's what I thought was in the uh, Maxon package. Yeah, absolutely, Danny. Glad to have you join us. How about some uh, smaller strands now? I'll do a quick save because my undos over here are annoyingly long. And let's do 1K. I might change the uh, color of the hair as well. Play with colors of everything. The green feels a little military to me. I don't know about you guys. I said that earlier. need to adjust that. So we're doing a quick remesh on the hair. We'll let that think for a second. Anas, welcome, hello, hello. Come on, Z remesher. It's crunching, it's thinking. There we go. Do a little history projection. Look at that shape. You see this? One, two, three. That looks really unnatural. Very uh, rhythmic. This is the type of stuff that you don't see in organic form. Just now seeing that. Let's do this. Let's take this shape. Let's combine it with this one. Not entirely, just enough. Let's 
Yeah. There we go. And then this edge just kind of fades out. You know? Nice edge control there. And let's make this less even. How does project history work? It's a form of projection in ZBrush. Uh, I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel. Just search uh, number one tip. Wait, why did I type number one one? My number one tip for all ZBrush users. It's from a year ago. Amazing tutorial. You will learn a lot about how projection in ZBrush works. If you are new to ZBrush or if you've been sculpting in ZBrush for a little while and you are not using projection, your world is about to change. Go check out that tutorial and uh, you will learn a ton. Really, really powerful tool. I use it at every single step of my work, uh, of my workflow. Blah, 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 blah. Let's clean this up. All right. So what are we thinking? Other than brown. Here, let's go for the green down here. Let's first change this. More blue. Probably still feels a little military. That's all right. I actually like the brown. This was literally the first color I chose. Uh, let's try something else, though. This looks awkward from this angle. I don't like that. Okay, more of a blondish color. I mean, we could do something crazy. Do some blue hair. Beautiful. Okay, this is a placeholder hair cap. Actually can and probably should be turned off at this point. Just trying to get some more volume out of the hair. So right now it's just kind of going into the head. You know, the geometry is just interpenetrating, which is fine, but we might be able to do some stuff to make that look a little less awkward. Ooh, I'm, I'm actually liking this direction here. Kind of getting some nice rounded volume here and there. Yeah, sure. The uh, the bright blue, I don't know if that's it, guys. <laughs> but um, it does definitely pull it away from uh, military with the outfit. I'll also change the color of that. I'm not liking that. So I don't, I don't think this blue is it you know we could maybe do blue but maybe less saturated maybe a little darker just kind of fill that in a little somewhere around there and let's see let's go grab that tongue color Looking for something more tan Let's try. Hmm. Nah. Nah, I didn't like it. All right. Uh, let's see. I want something uh, that's a little complimentary to the the shirt and the eyes
because having everything blue is just a little too much blue. And this is like blonde-ish, right? It's like dirty blonde-ish. Kind of like that, sure. All right. There's some awkward angles for the hair, like right here. What else? That maybe feels a little weird too. Not too bad from the side. Maybe more out. That works. That works actually a lot. Also get some more kind of waviness here. Giving that a little more curve because it was really flat before. This shape does not work here anymore. At one point it might have, not any longer. Give me my subdivs back. And that's the thing, you know, with experimentation, you can't be, you can't hold on to stuff. Like, you can try, but you just gotta let it go and move forward and Keep trying new stuff. And you might have had something like perfect earlier, but like it's not worth holding on to all the stuff that didn't work just for one area that did. Sometimes you gotta take one step backwards to take two steps forward. And instead of hesitating and spending a ton of time thinking about whether you should or should not, you just gotta do it. You just gotta keep moving forward. That's why I don't use layers. When I'm sculpting, layers are way too slow. I need something, you know, I need to work fast. Organically. Quickly. It's more curved, more rounded shapes. Nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm liking it. And this is what it is, you know? I started this stream saying I have no idea what I'm going to create. We're gonna experiment. I feel like we've done exactly that. We've we've come pretty far from a sphere, from our humble sphere beginnings. I can probably roll back on this head pretty far. Actually, I can roll back all the way to a sphere. It's got 2,500 brush strokes on it. So I'll quick save before I do that because I wanna show you guys. I think this is always, it's good. It's good to see like where you were, where you came from, the progress that you've made. The face is looking a lot better now. Oh, that's cute. That's a nice, that's a nice style. Uh, some red orange, maybe. That'd be nice complimentary. I do like, uh, I do like some red hair on a character. So yeah, let me try that here in a moment. But here we go. I'll keep all the facial features there. Look at that. Really simple stuff. Really basic. Let's turn perspective on. Bleh, look at that. Look how nasty this is. Look how gross all these shapes are. It's dirty. It's messy. The surface is unrefined. Doesn't matter. Things are awkward. Things, you know, the shapes, the proportions aren't amazing. That's okay. The, the foundation is there. That's what you need to build. You need to build the foundation. Look at that. Does that look good? Does that look good? No. No. Sculpting is slow. Sculpting takes a long time. What's going on here? We're looking better, but it's still not good. That jaw is huge. It's square. It's competing with all the round shapes. The face is like super deep in the eye corners and also somehow flat from the profile at the same time. Look at all these channels, look at that. Oh, we're all poofy. We're taking one step back here. We're working on that lower eyelid. Why are we doing that? Because we know that that is what is necessary to continue to push forward and improve on the character. Even here, you know, one of the last things I did to the face was the ear shape. I was like, the ear shape's so boring. I need to adjust that ear shape. I need to make it more interesting. 
I'm going to take the time to do that. Chloe should improve. Eyelids as well, the lower eyelid. All these things. Chloe should improve. One step at a time. All right. Rant over. <laughs> Let's grab that red. Reddish orange. I like a, I like a good reddish orange. All right, let's try just 25%. One. Ooh. I actually kind of like that already. Two. I'm just stepping it, stair stepping it. A little pink, a little pinkish. Go darker. It's kind of cool. This feels more reddish orange. Kind of like that. This feels dull now that, you know, by comparison. Kind of like that. I'm just using my mouse right now to make some adjustments. Some quick changes. Zoom out. Try out a couple crazy things. Really push that silhouette. Oh, what's that hair from earlier? If I do that, I'm gonna have to do a lot wider down here. That's kind of cute. Yeah, it's good. Good exaggeration. Just trying to push that hair to be more interesting and fun here from the front. Obviously, it's uh, pushed too far in some areas, but that's the point. Push it a little too far at first, and bring it back. Exaggerate, find out where it, you know, you push it too far and it breaks, and then slowly nudge it back. All right, and then the last, let me flip it one more time. Okay. And one of the last things I would like to do here is add those stray strands of hair that I keep talking about. after I fix this. Taking another step backwards, right? Just like I showed you with the face. One step back to allow me to take more steps forward here with the hair. Take a step back. Look at the profile. All right, still a little too far. Bringing it back. All right. some stray strands of hair. I'm just gonna do maybe like three or four of these. Man, this is bothering me. My geometry's fighting me here. Getting all these pinched areas. Let me dynamesh it. Just to get rid of all that nastiness. All that pinched geo is really not conducive 
to uh, sculpting. This doesn't blend very well here either. Okay, that works. Um, I'm not even going to remesh that. I'll just leave it DynaMesh. That's fine. Okay, curve tube brush. Uh, so stray strands, little st tiny strands of hair. Less is more, and you want to add them to areas that add uh, visual interest. So you want to kind of keep them around the face. So just a few pieces is fine. Um, I'll do like... Oh, let's try this. That's not what we want. Let's go smaller. I'm just going to do like a few sprouts of hair here and there. You know, just like one little thing there can add a lot of visual interest. Another one you can do is break the silhouette with something. So let's go right through here. So you do a strand like that. It's way too thick. Okay. Just thin it out. And then you can have it flow in and out of the shape like this. Give it a little more character. And just have it break the silhouette slightly. So this kind of shape is really nice through there. And again, you don't want a ton of these. Less is more. I want to urge you, be really careful with these because it's super easy to do a ton. And then it just looks terrible. It looks like, it starts looking like spaghetti real fast. That's why we experiment, to learn these things. That's why I'm here today. Hopefully you guys learned something as well from the stream. Picked up some nice tips. We're almost done here. that. Okay. There's a little piece going on in front of the face here. Flowing in and out. Just like that. Just a little piece. Helps frame the face. Super small. Another place to add these can be... Man, why, why is this so big? There we go. Around the bottom, you can do like a little, almost like a little hoop shape. Something like that. Again, just kind of going in and out. Closer here, and kind of bring that up a little more, and yeah, something like that. And all these just start to add a little more visual interest. So that's four. I'll do maybe a couple more. Try not to do too many. Always learn a ton on these streams. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. The, I mean. That's kind of the purpose of them, so I'm glad. I'm glad you're learning something along the way. And uh, if you want to learn even more, check out the Gumroad link in the description for the tutorials where I go in depth. Somebody was asking for some hard surface stuff earlier in ZBrush. That's where I have my hard surface robot tutorial released my recent guidebook, How to Easily Draw Every Day, if you're looking to build a drawing or sculpting habit, or just get into drawing and sculpting, that is a fantastic place to start. Or for any other tutorials, there's a ton of stuff on there. My custom brushes, 
my custom UI, the Appeal Academy, where you can learn everything I know about creating stylized characters, just like this one. You know what? I actually don't like that shape there, because it draws too much attention, I think, to this area. If I'm going to do this shape, I think it needs to be thicker. position. It was just drawing too much attention to this termination point, which I don't really care for. accidentally adjusted this thing over here. Don't know when that happened. Probably when I was working on that. Sometimes it's really fun to have just a couple of these right here. like that. Man, this thing got all jacked up here. I'm just gonna redo it. Jeez. Let me refresh my history recall. There we go. It's a little bit of an old bug in ZBrush. It's kind of an annoying one, though. Much smaller because they're the same size. Much smaller or larger. Either or. I don't want to draw a ton of attention to it though, so I'm going to make them smaller. Uh, let's see. I don't love this one up here. Could fiddle with that a little more. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm fine with that. I might add like one more stray strand, but for the most part, I'm happy with the number. It's more of just, you know, adjusting what I already have, playing with the uh, placement, playing with the proportion, and the scale of each of those. So if anything, instead of this piece here, what I might do is a piece that just kind of does something like this to help frame the face better because that that piece up there is just kind of drawing attention without serving a ton of purpose and I mean that's not it's just not benefiting the character so something that helps frame the face this piece over here is helping frame this piece is helping frame that's helping frame. This is... That's just kind of there. We'll delete it. If I don't love it, I don't want it.
If block out is essential to characters and designs, can they be used for animation, concept art, or prop and environment design? So block out just means rough draft, kind of. It's like the first stages of a sculpt, your primary form. It's like with animation, right? You get your keyframes, your key moments of animation. If you're pitching a ball, position one, standing. Position two, anticipation. Position three, throwing the ball. Position four, follow through, right? That's the steps of animation. So you start with the block out of your animation. Same basic idea, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but you know, when it comes to drawing, block out is pretty much your sketch. When it comes to props and environment design, stuff like that, yeah, you, you can definitely, they, they, <laughs> The game designers, they, they definitely block out their their environments. And then they add the details, all the extra fun stuff on top that just makes it look nice. Yeah, you definitely block out everything. That's just the foundation or fundamental stages of building. Yes, yes, yes. All right, this piece, too symmetrical, too similar. Gotta change it. Still too similar. There we go, better. This is, this one's maybe pulling too much attention. But I'm okay with that. So I kind of like it. All right. I could sit here and fiddle with this for the rest of the day, but I'm really happy with, uh, Kind of where it is right now, and uh, how far we've come, and a lot of the decisions that we've made. I see a lot of stuff that I would love to tweak and play with and continue to change, but uh, we have been streaming for quite a while here, so uh, one last time I'll shout out down below in the description. Check out my Gumroad, gumroad.com uh, slash Folygon or Folygon.com slash Gumroad, either or. Uh, to check out things like my custom brushes, my custom materials, learn everything I know about sculpting digital uh, characters from the Appeal Academy, grab my tool mod mesh, check out my new guide book. There's a lot of stuff on here. Go check it out. You're going to find something that is going to be helpful for you. If you enjoy the free stuff over here on YouTube, you're going to love the stuff over on my Gumroad because I go into so much more depth. I go into a lot of these you know, like base meshes and blockouts. If you want to learn more about blockouts, somebody was just asking about that. I go step by step into how I block out characters, talking about every single tool and part as I go through. Nothing sped up in a lot of these. You can ask me if you have questions about anything, I'd be happy to answer. Check it out. And uh, make sure if you're not already subscribed here on the YouTube channel so you can find out when I'm live streaming, streaming next or when a future video is coming out. Awesome. Well, I don't see any other questions here in chat, so thanks for coming and hanging out, guys. And I will see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.